I'm looking, and it's it's your tenth fight with mm-hmm. DC, if I if I'm counting yeah, correctly. Yeah, it's And and it's funny because I feel like when we first saw you, you were this young kid, upcoming, you know. And yeah. now it's, you know, it's been like four years. I mean, how has life changed for for you from what you saw then, what we were going through, to where you are now? Uh, you know, it's still the same, still the same journey. It's had ups and downs, but. I, everything has just changed for the better, really. I mean, I, I've had a lot. Of, I've had a, a hard learning curve. You know, I've fought some of the best guys in the division, and I've won some fights. I've lost some fights. I feel like I've grown. I've just grown a lot, you know. And I'm, I'm back to having fun. I started treating this like a job. I started, I started treating it like a nine to five, and I wasn't really having fun. And I was just sort of doing it to get through it, um, and pay the bills. But I'm back to enjoying it again. You know, I like fell back in love with it and remembered that. Like I started doing this when I was 14 or 15, and my dream was to be in the UFC and be a world champion. And you know, I'm I'm right on track. Like I'm I'm right where I want to be, like where I'm supposed to be. And some people never get that chance. You know, some people go their whole lives without being right where they're supposed to be. And like, I'm I'm blessed, lucky, whatever you know, whatever you want to call it. I'm I'm just thankful to be in this spot. You know, and having fun again. You know, like I have great coaches, a great team, and. And uh, there's a lot of stuff outside of fighting too that's just better. Like my lifestyle is just better, you know. When, when I first got to the UFC, I was still partying a little bit. I was still getting in trouble. I was still not focused. I had all these other distractions around me, you know. And now it's like, dude, I hang out. Like I have, a, I have a solid girlfriend. I have a cute puppy, and I, I barely leave my house. If I, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm not at the gym, I'm home. Like that's it, you know. If I'm not at the gym, I'm, I'm in bed reading comic books and, and hanging out with my girlfriend and my dog. Like my life is so focused right now. Well, that's got to be probably one of those tough balances because you, you're treating it such like a professional. You got to do this. You got to do this. And maybe that's why it switched. And, and it felt like, all right, it's a job. It's a business. And maybe that's why you lost a little bit of that, that fun side of it because you had to focus on those things. So it's almost like you have to do that, right? Yeah, but it's it's almost like it seems counterintuitive, but it's almost like the more focused you get, the more fun it, it, it is, if that makes sense. Because, you know, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's like the more I was partying and the more I was doing the other stuff and not even necessarily partying, but being distracted and having these other things, that was like, I, I had all these other things to fill this void, you know? And like, and then it was like, and I fight because that's what pays my bills. I had all this other shit that was like distracting me, but it's like the more that I focused on fighting, the more I realized like, dude, fighting fills the void. Fighting is, fighting is the thing that makes me happy. Like I don't need the, uh, I don't need anything else. Like, I don't need the other stuff. Like I don't need to party. I don't need to get in trouble. I don't need to go out. I don't, I don't, I don't need this longing for like the next cool thing. Like. I'm a professional fighter, like what's cooler than that? Like I, I love MMA and the more focused I get on MMA, the more focused I get on my career, the less it feels like a job, you know what I mean? The less it feels like a thing I have to go do and something that I get to do. Well, speaking of looking like you were having some fun, your last victory against Artem, you know, the, besides the pressures of, of dealing with one of these guys that, you know, comes from Connor's camp, you know, and people are hyping up and all this yeah. this stuff. You had Connor as well, cage side, right. you know, and there was interactions between you and him as well during the fight, you know. Yeah. I think a lot of people would see that it's all this extra pressure. You already had this fight going on, but then now you have these other interactions. Yeah. When you dealt with that and you were able to come away with such a, a, an impressive win, what did you learn or take away about yourself and how you deal with situations when, when you sat back and, and thought about what played out that night? Yeah, um, two, two things. The, the fact that Artem was from Connor's gym never really played into me. Like, if there's any pressure, it's from my own team. Like, I, I'm I train with champions. I train with world champions. Like, I'm I'm from a lineage of dudes who are the baddest motherfuckers in the sport. Like, if there's pressure, it's to be, it's to to keep up with them. To not, to not, you know what I mean. To not fall behind. If there's pressure, it's 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 all my. I put on myself to to kind of hold the team up. You know what I mean. Like, I'm supposed to be the next generation of this sort of dynasty like I, I'm that's all I give a shit about I don't care about anybody else's team like my team's consistently been one of the best teams in the world you know like before I got there they were the best team in the world so like you know who, who like I, I'm trying to make sure that that I represent you know what I mean like that's the that's the pressure I feel I don't give a shit about anybody else's team um, as far as Connor you know making a big scene a big spectacle of it I personally I loved it like I love it I, I just I really fucking enjoy confrontation. Like I really enjoy that feeling of like, all right, we're in a fight. Like we're not, we're not playing a game of basketball. Like we're not, we're not, we're you know, I'm saying we're not, 
we're not we're not doing some other sport we're not we're not even playing football we're not playing even hockey where it's a contact like, we are in a fight like there's nothing else to do but be in a fight like that's why this sport is so pure and like i just enjoy that confrontation you know so connor connor making a big spectacle i i loved it man i, I even in the moment i just i loved it like i i just enjoy that like i enjoy confrontation i enjoy fighting i enjoy make, causing a scene and everybody is looking in like just just on the edge of their seat, you know, to see what's gonna happen. So, yeah, I enjoyed the whole process. Uh, it just, it was a reminder to me, you know, it kind of, kind of put a stamp uh, on, on things and confirmed that, um, you know, I love this. Like, I love doing this. I love confrontation. I love, I love hitting someone. I love getting hit back and looking at him like, bro, you, you can't, you can't hurt me, and come and hitting him harder. You know, like I love, I fucking love fighting, man. Like, and that whole thing, that whole experience in Poland was just like a, a really great reminder. And your millionaire strat, I think that's what he called it. Yeah, was yeah, solid. the billionaire strat. The billionaire yeah. strat. Well, he was, Connor was looking over at me and I had to show him like, <laughs> not tonight, motherfucker. Like, you might think you're the coolest motherfucker in the room, but I'm the coolest motherfucker in the room. You know what I'm saying? You gotta let people know. I love it. But I, you know, nothing but respect those guys. Artem was a good opponent. You know, Connor's done a lot for the sport, but in that moment, like, I gotta let him know I'm the fucking man, you know? I dig it. Well, you kind of touched on alpha male, and I, I wanted to, to, to touch on that as well. So I know there's been some reorganization, you know, um, or some degree, but um, what is it? Uh, tell me what's going on there right now. Like, who's running the show? How has the structure of practices changed? I know there's, I guess, more individual head coaches of dis different disciplines. But um, uh, Yeah, I mean, we've always sort of had, like, a, a co-op thing, you know? Like, even before we had anybody that was a coach, like, we just had, it was sort of like... It, to me, I've always sort of looked at like a trade. Like you have like a, you know you have masters and apprentices sort of passing down knowledge, and you know the guys who always looked out for me are like big brothers, and now those guys are in coaching positions, and I have younger kids sort of looking at me like a big brother, which is a weird feeling, you know. But it's it's like you know business as usual. Um, my wrestling coach Danny Castillo uh, runs a lot of the practices. Um, he runs wrestling and MMA practices. You know we have. Uh, we have Uriah running some pro practices and he does a lot of submission grappling stuff and then we also have Chris Holdsworth doing uh, jiu-jitsu and pro MMA classes. So it's really this cool um, system that we have worked out where it's like, you know, obviously certain guys have certain strong points, but I mean, they're all well-rounded. I mean, you look at Chris Holdsworth, he's a high, high-level black belt, but he was kicking people in the head when he was, you know, he won the ultimate fighter. He was kicking people in the head and beating their ass, you know, sticking the jab. I mean, he knows how to, he could, like we have, that's the thing about our, our team is Chris Holdsworth is the head jiu-jitsu coach, but he can run a kickboxing class if, if the kickboxing coach isn't there to fill in, you know what I'm saying? Justin Buckles is running kickboxing, but for whatever reason, if he's on a, tri a fight trip, uh, Chris Holdsworth can run kickboxing, you know? And Danny, run, Danny my, my wrestling coach, he can run uh, a pro class, you know what I mean? Faber can run jiu-jitsu even though he usually runs uh, MMA class. I mean, it's it's really uh, it's really a co-op, like Faber says, he always, always talk about how it's a co-op, you know, we're all helping out. And uh, people do have assigned roles, but I think just because we have such a wealth of knowledge, everybody sort of transcends their job a little bit, you know what I mean? Who's gonna be out here with you for this fight? This fight I have uh, Danny Castillo, I have Fabio Prado, and those two have been in my corner. I think the first time they cornered me, I was like 19 or 20 years sure. old, you know, so it's, you know, it's mandatory. And then um, uh, a friend of mine's a striking coach in Southern California. I've been bringing him up to work with him. His name's Tyler Wombles. He runs a classic fight team in Southern California. Works with a lot of good guys, Raymond Daniels and a couple other people. So really high level Muay Thai coach and uh, he'll be, he'll be in the corner with me as well. So you get the call from the UFC and they say Dennis Bermudez. What's your initial thoughts when they offer him? Yeah. Yes, 100%. Take it. It's a great fight, great matchup, and he's got a number next to his name. That's all I give a shit about this year is, is, is getting a, a, a number next to my name, a, a, a better and better number next to my name. Where do you see him being the most dangerous? On the feet? On the ground? I mean, I, I think he's another person like yourself that's well-rounded, yeah. could take it either area. Yeah, I think most people in the sport at this point can do pretty much everything pretty well, you know? I think he's going to look to take me down. I don't think it's going to work for him very well, but I think he's going to look to take me down. Um, but I think he's good everywhere, man. He's a good fighter. I think I think when you get to this point, especially at this weight class, there's there's not going to be a guy, a high level guy that's like, oh, he just hits hard, or like, oh, he just wrestles, or he, you know what I mean? Like, our weight class is a mix of guys who hit hard, but they're still fast and they have good endurance. You know, like 45, 55s is like that melting pot where 
we can we're as fast as the small guys we hit as you know we hit as hard as the little bit bigger guys and and we can fight for 15 minutes straight so everyone's good you know but i just like this matchup and and i really don't care who it is i just want i want that number do you expect uh you know he's, he's coming in he has two losses do you expect to see a bit more desperation on his side and, and is that something maybe that you can use towards your advantage or you look to use towards your advantage? i mean he might i mean he might be desperate but i think he's probably i mean he's been a professional a long time i, I think that he will probably fight the way that he usually does i think he i think he'll definitely have he'll be really determined you know the way you are with any fight obviously he's coming in to win but i'm not sure if i'm not counting on him to make a mistake because he's lost two fights in a row you know i'm gonna i'm gonna look to exploit mistakes in the style myself but i'm not banking on him coming in wild and desperate because he's lost two i think he'll probably come in and try to stick to a game plan you know i mean he's he's uh, i give the guy credit i mean he's been around a long time he's a smart enough fighter to know what he what what his strengths are i don't think he's going to come in and just let it all go because he's you know he's on a little bit of a slide i think he'll probably stay pretty composed but um i'm gonna pick up i'm gonna pick at him a little bit pick at him with the jab and stay long see what he does and uh whatever he gives me i'll take what would be more gratifying to get the win via ko or submission i'll take either one i'd like a submission because i haven't had one yet but uh you know i'm not going to complain about a knockout either i think i really think that's the thing about my style uh, i take risks you know and it's paid off before and so other times it hasn't but i've never had a boring fight you know even my losses in the ufc have been have been exciting you know i've, I've, I've never been in a boring fight and i never will be um so I think I could finish him anywhere. My style is exciting, you know. Like I, I just go out to actually really get in a fight, so I could finish him standing, I could finish him on the ground. You know, we're gonna see. With uh, a win over him, and especially a decisive one, would it be your biggest win to date on your career? Yes. And and do you think that? And you kind of mentioned earlier, should that definitely get you break into the, at least the top fifteen? I don't know. I beat the number 11 guy in the world on three weeks notice and I didn't get put in the top 15 uh, until someone left. So uh, I don't really know how those rankings work, I guess. Whoever, whoever's working those, uh, maybe they're not an Andre Feely fan. I don't know. Maybe they're, whoever's working those rankings, uh, maybe I, maybe I pissed, stepped on their shoes in the elevator or something. Maybe I pissed them off. But I don't know how those rankings work. They defy logic. But uh, I think this sport and life in general is pretty much a popularity contest. And uh, I'm co-main event. It's a big stage. When I knock this motherfucker out, I'm getting uh, I'm, I'm getting my stock raised, and that's all I can focus on. You know, like I just that's another thing. I just been focusing on myself, like all the other stuff. You know, all the other stuff that goes into it. Who's gonna get ranked and all this other stuff. Like, man, the, the older I get, the more I just care about myself. You know what I mean? And and performing. Looking back on the record, we've seen a bunch of win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss. Do you do you look back at that and does it does that bug you? Do you feel that you've done enough this training camp to kind of break that cycle? Yeah, it drives me uh, it drives me crazy to look at that. You know what I mean? Especially because after my first UFC when I was thirteen and one, yeah, it drives me up a wall to see the the win loss win loss win. Um, but I think I've done enough. I, I think I did enough every fight camp. You know, I, I never slack in fight camp, but just that fighting is crazy and. And sometimes things don't go as planned or sometimes something is off or, you know, MMA is crazy. So it's not that I didn't do enough in fight camp. I always do enough in fight camp. I just, um, I feel like I've, I feel like I'm just in a different place right now, you know, a better place, more focused and, and having fun again. And uh, I'm just really excited for Saturday. Yeah, I get this win streak going. Yeah, and, and I know you're you're hoping to start two, 2018 with the bang. So when 100%. you when you play this fight out in your head, how do you get your hands raised? I think I catch him. I think I catch him coming in. I, think I catch him coming in and sit him down. Uh, I can't tell you exactly how it's going to happen, but I got a couple ideas, and you guys will see Saturday. I think he's going to get frustrated. I think he's going to come barreling in. I think he's going to get clipped.